Hello, you're watching Telecom TV. We are joining from the Global Mobile Broadband Forum in Dubai. And now I'm happy to be joined by Sean Collins, who is the Executive Chairman of CCS Insight. Hi, Sean. Thank you for joining us today. So what are the global trends and collaboration that will shape the direction of 5.5G? And how can operators align? It's a good question. I think that we see 5G as a team game. Um, the partnerships and the collaborations that emerge as a result of 5G, and it's very different to almost any G we've seen before, will define the success of the operators and how they're able to build and extract the value from a very exciting new generation of mobile networks. Those, those relationships could be difficult, they won't be easy in terms of being able to define who gets what value, but they'll be very valuable for the whole of the pond that'll be there, eventually trying to make those partnerships work. So I think one of the key trends that we'll look at for a successful 5G development for any network operator is how many and how valuable those partnerships are in bringing together cloud and security and IoT and AI and machine learning and all of those big, big things that will be developing in the, in the 5G in the 5G and the 5.5G market. I think it's also fair to say, just to, just to finish that question off, that 5G is important and impressive, but it's not enough on its own. But also all these other technologies won't survive without 5G. So it's a very, very necessary building of those relationships and those cohabiting scenarios for those operators. And how do you see 5.5G influencing smart city developments and rural connectivity in the years to come? Well, I think. Smart cities and rural connectivity have received a lot more attention in the last two or three years following COVID. I think uh, we understood that levels of connectivity that we receive at our homes in particular, and those geographically diverse points of residence, have become just as important as having great connectivity on the bus or at the office or in the city. So I think the contribution that we're going to see from 5.5G in particular, and also more broadly 5G, is to be able to deliver a giga, a giga quality broadband environment to our homes in particular, um, and delivering that particularly to those unconnected, those groups who are unconnected. I was talking on Friday to uh, the CEO of the second largest operator in Indonesia, and he says that far from 5G uh, becoming something separate to fiber in delivering broadband. They see it as a very complementary technology to deliver into a very geographically diverse country. So that's a very prime example of how we see 5G and 5G, 5.5G delivering that over, over, over communication, that over network into those very hard to get to areas. And finally, what are the new monetization models for 5G? I think that's harder to answer right now. We're only four years into 5G. Um, we've got a long way to go, even with the most optimistic announcements that have been made recently, 6G is at least seven years away. So 5G is the only game in town right now. So how can we make 5G work for us to make us money? Much more, much more obvious than I think selling with fast 5G, sorry, fast 4G or fast Facebook or fast YouTube. Frankly, 4G is good enough for what we've got in those experiences right now. Where we think 5G and 5.5G make a big difference is under understanding how we can build beyond that into uh, organizations like fast uh, fixed wireless access, really important part we, that we talked about a minute ago. That's a very important part of it. And perhaps more excitingly and perhaps more valuable is going to be delivering private mobile networks, either as part of a network or separately when it's sliced away from the operator um, to be able to deliver those experiences in 5.5G and beyond. Sean, thank you very much for speaking with us. It's a pleasure.